Hello, everyone. Welcome to our shared session. I wish I could hear you, but you have to put up with listening to me. But it's lovely to be in touch. And thank you for your encouragement for these sessions, for the masses on Sunday and so forth. Um, today, I want to uh, speak to you about the Congregation of the Passion, the order to which I belong, we belong here. And the reason for it is because today is the feast of the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now, this is a feast that a lot of people may not realize exists, because when we think of the presentation, we normally think of Mary and Joseph presenting the child Jesus in the temple and Anna and a Simeon being present. No, this is a devotional feast um, where we, the church meditates on Our Lady presented as a child in the temple with the idea that right from her early girlhood, her early childhood, she was totally open to the grace of God and totally cooperative with what God's plan was for her and for the world. And it's that total openness and total cooperation that really struck a deep chord with St. Paul of the Cross, founder of the Passionists. And uh, on this day in 1720, he fulfilled a desire that had been with him since he had had a vision of our Blessed Lady wearing this black habit with the sign on her breast and asking him to found a congregation that would wear this garment. That was a year or two before he was on retreat in uh, Castellazzo in Italy and he asked the bishop who was uh, who had asked Paul to write a journal about his retreat. He'd seen the extraordinary uh, fervor and zeal and Christian commitment that Paul had, and he wanted Paul to write an account of, uh, of his 40-day retreat, which Paul did, and he also, during that 40 days, up until end of January uh, 1721, he wrote the first rule for the Passionist Congregation. Now that was in 1720, 1721. It was a quite an austere rule, to put it mildly. So austere, in fact, that it took almost 50 years before the church in her wisdom, having made certain suggestions and alterations to the rule, before the church in her wisdom accepted the rule and established finally in 1766 the Congregation of the Passion. For me, there's a lesson in that itself, and I'll come back to it about how Paul of the Cross had to persevere with coping with enormous and numerous setbacks. The situation now is that the congregation is present in over 60 countries. England was the first real outreach from the um, Passionists in Rome, and that was in the 1840s. But we're now working in many, in, as I say, 60 countries or, or more. And there are vocations coming into the order from China, where we have a, a kind of a, an under the radar presence, and Vietnam. The fundamental message that Our Lady gave to St. Paul of the Cross, and which he meditated on for the rest of his life, was that the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ is the most uh, outstanding proof of God's love, the most outstanding proof of God's love 
for his people and for the world. And I thought I'd just share a few thoughts on the passion today. Thoughts that help me, they may not help you, but if the passion is so central, of course, which it is to our Christian faith, incidentally, when Clement, Pope Clement XIV finally accepted the rule of the congregation in 1766, he said, this is the latest of the religious orders to be founded, and it should have been the first. So here are some thoughts of how I try to reflect on the passion today, with, with the, the emphasis on today and what we're going through at the present time. Because I often think that there were great temptations in Jesus's life to take another road that would have meant he could have avoided the passion that he could have found another route that wouldn't have involved him in the suffering that he knew was coming. And after the temptations that he suffered in the desert, that wonderful passage early in St. Mark's Gospel, um, we move to the question that Jesus asks at Caesarea Philippi when he asks his disciples, who do people say I am? And they give, as you know, various answers. And then he says, who do you say I am? Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, of course, by God's grace, says you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And uh, Jesus congratulates him and thanks him for that, sharing that insight that he had. And then Jesus says, and the Son of Man, i.e. I, have to go up to Jerusalem, and there I will suffer grievously. And then Peter tells him, well, if that's the case, Lord, you mustn't go to Jerusalem. Avoid it. And Peter, uh, Jesus rebukes Peter in the most extraordinary way. Get behind me Satan because the way you think is man's way and not God's now why that's a, such a strong rebuke the only reason I can think is that that our Lord was tempted that way yes I, I no, there's a way out of this I could I could work my mission in a different way I hope I'm not being disrespectful when I say that and that's why he reacts so strongly, because he was tempted, as he was tempted in the desert. So uh, Jesus resisted that temptation. He had to, if you like, he had to grit his teeth. And as it says later on in St. Luke's Gospel, he set his face towards Jerusalem. That suggests that it was a struggle. And then we think of the agony in the garden in Gethsemane. If, if this cup can pass me by, if there's a way out of the trial that I'm facing, Lord, let it be so. And three times he asks his father for that permission to find another way, to avoid what is coming. And then as we know, he accepts the Father's will, let not my will, but thy will be done. It's such an important lesson for all of us, I think. And that's not the end of it, because on the cross, when Jesus was on the cross, uh, people shouted at him and said, look, if you are the son of God, echoing the taunt of the devil in the... Uh, in the temptations of the desert, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross. And our Lord resisted that temptation too. He's not, he was not going to save himself. 
he was not going to save his own life. He was going to give his life because that was the singular most powerful proof of God's love for the world. If he had saved himself, he wouldn't have been serving God. So to me, the passion uh, is a lesson, a, a most profound lesson in endurance, in accepting the difficulties that come, some great, some small, and of, of not losing trust that somehow we will get through by the grace of God. And that's what I hope helps me in, in my daily life. And just to finish off, I just want to say one or two things about what we passionists are doing in this country. Um, and we continue our preaching ministry best we can in parishes and in our main retreat house at Minster Acres. We have witnessed over the last seven or eight years the growth of a, um, a community of, of people in ordinary life uh, who are involved in ordinary occupations, who are called the community of the passion, and who share our motivation of compassion, of being present to people who suffer, of reflecting on that suffering and on, of reflecting on how the grace of God is active even in the suffering, or perhaps right because it is the suffering. So they're called the community of the passion, and there are 20 or so people meeting in small groups in various parts of the country, sharing our spirit, if, if I can put it that way, finding a common spirit with us. We have a grant funding arrangement that helps to support those who work with the poor, who do work that we might be able want to do ourselves if we had the manpower. And we have several groups involved in working with asylum seekers, in working with refugees of various kinds, uh, campaigning against some of the excesses of the mining companies uh, in different parts of the world. We support them because we see that they are uh, acting out of compassion and seeking a more just world for the poor. And we're also supporting groups who are active in trying to alert the rest of us to wake us up to the urgency of the climate emergency. And we give support there as well, as well as uh, having a house in Birmingham where some uh, asylum seekers are, uh, are living uh, as they await the outcome of their claims. To sum it all up, we have a logo now, uh, a, a stamp that you might see occasionally on a document, which says, uh, around the stamp, it, said, it says, crucified God, crucified people, crucified earth. And it's inspired by all that those powerful symbols and powerful words mean that we try to follow the example, the encouragement, the teaching, the leadership of St. Paul of the Cross today. And fittingly, tomorrow, Feast of Christ the King, he reigned from the cross, as St. John clearly tells us in his gospel. Uh, we will celebrate the actual day in 1720, when St. Paul of the Cross received the habit for the first time. There we are. God bless you all. Look forward to being in touch again.
just a couple of things to mention in the notices. Um, the first is to remind people that on next Saturday at 11 o'clock, we will be live streaming the Mass of the Remembrance of all those whose funerals have taken place in the parish here over the last 12 months. And if there are any of you who would like someone else to be mentioned, uh, a loved one who died, but perhaps the funeral took place elsewhere, um, please get in touch. A few of you already have, so we'll add those names to our list. Um, thank you for that. And then for those of you uh, following the Bible timeline, uh, we're inviting everyone who's involved to uh, to join in a Zoom meeting next Friday at 7 p.m. and um, where we can share our reflections on the course. I know it has aroused some different opinions, but that's that's not a bad thing. And uh, we will have had another session by then, of course, on Wednesday. So that's next Friday. I need to know if you'd like to join in. And for that, I need to know your email address, please. Uh, and Mark will put on the notices, he will put the, um, the, Zoom, the detail of the Zoom meeting. But uh, it'd be best if you could email me to let me know. Um, we get an idea of how many are joining in. Okay, look forward to that. And uh, have a have a, as good a week as you can, uh, coming towards the end of November, believe it or not. Please God, next week, the week after this, there'll be some positive news about lockdown. But we'll have to pray and see. Okay, bye everyone. God bless. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.